Hey y'all, it's Nancy the Handy Scandy. Welcome back for a lengthy craft adventure. Today, as you can see, we're going to be making our own texture plates with items from our stash. So we're going to take these items that you most likely have in your stash already. We're going to turn them into these and add a little more depth to them, a little more dimension. And then they'll look like this <laughs> after we make some of these. So I'm excited. We're going to go ahead and just jump right into this process. <laughs> know that this actually is about a three part process and I'll get back to that in a minute. So I've already taken my cardboard from my, from my trash, actually not even from my stash. And I've already laid down one layer of texture paste through all these stencils onto all these plates. So now we're about to add another layer. The first layer was just some texture paste from, I don't know who it was from, just some typical modeling paste, right? This is the Pasta Sculptura. I decided I would use the Pasta, pasta Sculptura for this layer because it's a little thicker. It has a little more body and dimension to it. And I just wanted, like I said, more depth to these. So adding another layer to each one and the honeycomb, as you can see, I did two. One was completely covered and the other is just like bits and pieces. And I, I love that kind of grungy, distressed look. And of course, I'm doing the drips as well. And you can see that my paste is super thick. <laughs> I had a hard time getting it on. Now here's the brick one. I did the entire panel, which I love. And then I'm also doing a little more distressed, like a, a brick wall where some of the mortar and stuff is falling off. So I think that's really cool too. And then I set them aside to dry. Drying is very important in all of these. In the texture plates, in the paints, in the pulls, in every bit of it. So you just want to make sure that you let them dry before you do your final steps. However, as you'll see in just a second, this one dried too quickly on me. Now, this is kind of time lapse. As you can see, it's sped up significantly and more time passes than it looks like here. So this definitely dried out. And you can see on my on my little texture plate there, it didn't pull up a lot of a lot of paint. So this is a wah, wah, wah because I didn't get a pull. <laughs> so when you want to do a pull and your the medium is dry that's on your plate, you add a layer of either an acrylic paint or gesso or a matte medium and then that will adhere to your dried on paint and it will pull it up. So there it is and I'm a little uh, unimpressed <laughs> to be honest. It just didn't get the impression that I was hoping for. This one however you can see that it's better. It's pulling up the paint on that on the plate and you can see all the texture as well on the gel plate. So. I'm trying to let this dry. A lot of time has, has lapsed here, actually. Hello, there's my sweet boy wanting to talk with us. So the, the paint on the plate is dry. So then I use the fresh paint to pull it up. And here it is. So there's a little more texture on this one, but it's also, you can see where it wasn't quite dry. Because A, the paint turned that kind of um, russet color as I was putting it on but um, it's also milky. So here I thought, well, let me try to use my plate as a stamp because there's not much difference in them if you've ever bought an actual texture plate. Um, yeah, so I just thought, well, it's already white. Let me put down some white brick. So it kind of worked. It just gave a different effect. And of course, the paint blopped there. But guys, let me encourage you, don't get frustrated with the process. Just trust it. If, you're, if you feel like things aren't going your way, walk away from it. Come back again. Come back again and just keep trying. And you're always one pull away from perfection. If you don't like it like this one, I wasn't really impressed. So I decided I was going to pull it again. So I laid down the white. I did a little more pressing and then I started to peel it up, but it was just not coming up. So I thought, hmm, time to work on two plates. We set that one aside to dry and it's just literally sitting to my left. You just, you just can't see it on camera. So now I'm using all of these beautiful golds and yellows and ochres and it's time for the honeycomb. Of course it is. It's all honey colors, right? <laughs> so just laying this one around, it's the one that's kind of mottled and broken up and I'm using again some more paint after it's dried some to pull this up. Now I'm going to set that aside to dry and I'm going to do a switcheroo. 
So the honeycomb one is drying, and this is the brick one that I laid down the white just to see what we were going to get. And, you know, it's, it's there. There's more brick. Am I totally enamored with it? No, not yet. But there's a comparison of the two. But again, don't give up on the process. And remember, it's just a background. And it will likely be covered up by other elements. So this is just our base. Do we want our base to look good? Absolutely. And that's the whole process. And sometimes this can be your art all in, a, in and of itself. It just depends on, on what you like and, and how it works out for you. Now this one is pulling in different places. And that's because one of the lessons that I learned is... I need to apply even pressure, which is kind of hard on a flimsy cardboard. So maybe I could have used a more sturdy cardboard, or I've seen people use like plastic substrates of some sort. So I'm setting that one aside to dry before I lay down the paint on it, and that's the honeycomb. Swoon and be still my heart. This one is my favorite, and I can't wait to show you the projects that I've already made with this one. I am in love with that one. Look at all those grungy bits. Now see how you can see the outline of the cardboard? Another lesson learned is to trim it out. You know how we would do with um, the red rubber stamps? Same thing. Trim it out up closer to your image so that you're not pressing down that, that excess cardboard into your paint. So again, using, using the kind of modeled honeycomb and then I come in with with the other honeycomb and the drips like I want to try the drips now let's see how they work again I need to trim it out see how it's pulling up the paint from around the edges not really happy with that effect but again I am showing myself grace remembering that I'm learning as I'm showing you guys I'm essentially showing you my learning process so yeah we're figuring it out and there were a couple times that I had to walk away and remind myself to maintain that non-judgmental non-judgmental stance. So again, allowing everything to dry in between the layers so that I'm not m messing up my print. Oh, that I wanted to show you my roll-off paper. I thought that was coming along pretty good. I like it. But yeah, allowing it to dry. Dry, dry, dry. It looks like there's more switching out going on than there was. This was hours worth of worth of play. <laughs> so here is the one with the sparkle stencil that I made into the plate. And it's very subtle, and I've actually made some projects with this that I'll be showing soon. Not in this video. It won't be in this video. Yeah, so I'm loving it. So while I go back and forth in my process, let me tell you about what's going on with the video. So this is actually a three-part video. This one is almost, well, it's over 14 minutes. I can't remember exactly how long, but it's long. And this is cutting out so much that you don't even get to see. And I want to be able to really take you along on my process. So today, over on the Whimsy Stamps channel, if you're interested, there's an abbreviated version of this. And you're welcome to hop over there. I do give a sneak peek of, of a couple different projects, but then on Wednesday, March 2nd, 2022, pop back here. There I'm showing you all that glorious texture with those different colors. I thought that one was fun. On Wednesday, come back and I will have three, I can't remember, three projects I think that I've completed already using these. Now this one ends up becoming kind of a blank slate, if you will, because it added visual or, or actual texture with the honeycomb plates, but it, the visual texture not so much. It's just too tone on tone, I guess. So this one, I'm kind of frustrated. I'm just cleaning up. I just laid down the white paint, just setting it aside to dry. So I'll see how much of that excess I can get pulled up. This one is, I don't know. I just had kind of this mermaid or unicorn thought process in my head when I was laying down those colors. And then I chose the brick pattern. Not sure where my brain took a detour, but we'll see how it looks here in just a minute. Now this is my cleanup pull, and I am loving the grunge. Y'all, if you know anything about me, you know I love the grunge. Oh my gosh. I should have just stopped here, to be honest. I just love that grunge. But I thought maybe I could use that as a frame and use my plates again as... As stamps essentially and just kind of stamp some of the images so that's what I'm trying 
And this is again where I encourage you, don't give up on yourself, don't give up on your process, and set aside expectations. Unpredictable art is just that, right? It's unpredictable. And gel plating, gel plate printing is definitely unpredictable. You mm -hmm. might know what you hope to get and it may or may not work, but it's always, always a surprise. Even to seasoned professionals, it's a surprise. They have a little more understanding than I do at this point, and then maybe as the same as some of you, perhaps. Um, but yeah, it's always unpredictable. That's why it's called that. So set those expectations aside. Be kind to yourself. Be realistic with your process. Walk away. Be non-judgmental. And don't get frustrated like me. <laughs> and just roll over everything that you dislike. But the truth is, as I've already said, it's just a background. And you're always one pull away from what you feel is perfection. Do I love this at this point? No. But do I love it now after I've seen it several times and walked away and come back with a new perspective? I adore it. I absolutely adore it. And the camera doesn't do, doesn't do it justice. So this is the one with the beige and the gold strips. As you can see, it's got some of that grungy goodness along the edges as well. And I'm using my texture plates in the same way because when I printed it and I used the honeycomb, it literally just put in texture into the paint. It didn't pull anything up. It didn't leave um, visual pattern unless you turn it just right in the light and, you know, didn't. So I just used various plates and same thing, not overly enamored. In fact, with both of these, I was feeling like I had messed up the grungy goodness, but in the end, I do love them a lot. So be kind to yourself. So this is the one, like I said, where I had kind of the mermaid slash unicorn thought process as I was laying out those colors. And then I just said, you know what? I'm just going to stencil. I'm going to do traditional jelly painting or jelly printing. I don't know why I keep saying that. Maybe because I'm using paint instead of alcohol inks, which is what I like to use the most. But just using a little bit of clear gesso for this pull. I did not wait a long time. And yeah, so the pa paper is actually sticking to the plate. So I have a couple tears there. And yeah, just wanting to get that off before it sticks. This one again, I don't hate. Like it's got some nice grungy goodness. You can see those layers of color there. But this is where I stopped. So these are what my plates look like at this point, And I'm in love with them. <laughs> they may become elements in some collage along the way. I'm not really sure. Look at them, aren't they fun? Trim them out up a little bit closer. But yeah, so here's a close up of all of the prints. And I also show my roll off pa papers here in, in a little bit as well. Keep an eye on the edges, those grungy bits and the different layers and the patterns and the texture. See, every time I see it, it gets a little bit better. Now I have made a, pro a couple projects with this one I'll be showing on Wednesday. This one, I just have one little one by five inch strip left of, of the honeycomb one. And that is all of them, guys. So that is how I took these basic supplies from our stash and our trash <laughs> and turned them into these texture plates. And they're actually very fun, very fun. And like I said, these texture plates, now that they look like this, they may very well become elements in some type of a collage. And then these are my prints, guys. I had a good time. And I feel like if you had a stencil with maybe a larger pattern, you might get a better effect. I'm not sure I'm going to have to keep playing. But for now, guys, I have taken enough of your time. And I thank you for spending it with me. Let me know your thoughts downstairs. And as I said, you can hop on over to Whimsy Stamps today if you want an abbreviated version. Come back on Wednesday for sure, and I'll show you a couple projects. Thanks, guys. This is Nancy, the Handy Scandy, and I'm out. Mwah!